Good evening here are tonight's top stories. A teenager tragically succumbs to injuries from an Essequibo coast accident, while Nicholas White is remanded after alleged marijuana possession. Georgetown mourns the loss of a woman in a fatal accident, and Arakaka reels from a fatal stabbing incident with a suspect in custody. Puruni Back Dam mourns minor Stephen Mark Samuel, killed in a pit accident. Additionally, a family seeks answers after a GDF soldier's tragic death, and a mother and son are charged with murder following a fatal altercation. Two men are charged and remanded in connection with the murder of a Burbis woman. Stay tuned for updates. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more news. Teen dies from injuries sustained in Essequibo Coast accident. Tragedy struck on the Perseverance Public Road, Essequibo Coast, as 17-year-old Shane Law lost his life due to injuries sustained in a recent accident. Law tragically passed away while receiving medical care at the Georgetown Public Hospital on Saturday, following his admission to the intensive care unit. The accident, which occurred around 9.30 HRS on April 10, saw Law heading north on the public road when he tragically lost control of his motorcycle, resulting in a collision with a motor vehicle. The impact was severe, causing Law's motorcycle to burst into flames. Reports indicate that mechanical issues plagued Law's motorcycle at the time of the accident, with oil leakage and overheating contributing to the loss of control. The collision left Law with severe head injuries, ultimately leading to his untimely death. The body of the young victim currently rests at the hospital mortuary, awaiting a post-mortem examination to ascertain the exact cause of death. The community mourns the loss of Shane Law, a promising young life taken too soon in a tragic accident. Nicholas White remanded after alleged marijuana possession. In a recent development at the Georgetown Magistrates Court, a 22-year-old resident of Kitty, Georgetown, Nicholas White of Shell Road, faced serious charges related to the possession of narcotics. Senior Magistrate Clive Nurse presided over the proceedings, which saw White charged with possession of 52 pounds of marijuana, believed to be intended for trafficking. White, who entered a plea of not guilty, found himself remanded to prison following his arrest last Saturday. The court set the next hearing for June 30, awaiting further reports on the case. According to a statement from police headquarters, the arrest occurred around 22.00 HRS when law enforcement officers, acting on received information, intercepted a white Premio motor car, license plate PAC 4402, at Ramp Road Ruimvelt, Georgetown. White was identified as the driver of the vehicle at the time. A subsequent search of the car led to the discovery of a brown salt bag containing 15 bulky parcels suspected to contain cannabis. The parcels, wrapped in transparent plastic, contained leaves, seeds, and stems believed to be marijuana. White's legal situation remains precarious as he awaits further legal proceedings, facing the weight of the law in connection with the alleged possession of narcotics. Tragic Accident Claims Life of Woman in Georgetown A somber mood descended upon Water Street in Georgetown on Monday as a fatal accident unfolded, claiming the life of Doreen Haynes, a resident of the area. The heartbreaking incident, captured on video, sent shockwaves through the community and underscored the dangers faced by pedestrians navigating the bustling thoroughfare. According to eyewitnesses, the tragedy unfolded as Haynes found herself in the midst of a conversation with a man seated in a parked canter, positioning herself near the center of the road. This inadvertent obstruction of the lane created a perilous situation, prompting an approaching truck driver to maneuver around the stationary vehicles. In the moments that followed, as the truck sought to return to its designated lane and avoid oncoming traffic, Haynes found herself caught between the two vehicles. Tragically, despite efforts to avert disaster, she was dragged a short distance and ultimately struck by the truck, resulting in fatal injuries. The video footage, though potentially distressing, serves as a poignant reminder of the hazards posed by congested roadways and the importance of pedestrian safety measures. In the wake of this devastating incident, authorities are expected to review existing traffic protocols and undertake measures aimed at preventing similar tragedies in the future. As the Georgetown community mourns the loss of Doreen Haynes, thoughts turn to her loved ones, who now grapple with the profound grief and sorrow brought about by this sudden and tragic loss of life.
Fatal Stabbing Incident Rocks Arakaka Suspect in Custody A tragic incident unfolded late Sunday night, April 14, 2024, at approximately 11 p.m. M., at John O'Gaskin's shop in 5 Miles, Arakaka, Northwest District, resulting in the death of Trevor Hillemon, a pork knocker from 5 Miles Arakaka in Lot 14, Public Road, Putaroyan, West Coast Demerara. The alleged perpetrator, Kenny David, a 42-year-old minor also from 5 Miles Arakaka, is under investigation for the incident. According to initial inquiries, the suspect and the victim were acquainted with each other. The altercation occurred when the suspect was passing on the main access road and was called over by the victim. They began consuming alcohol together, but the situation escalated into a heated argument. At that point, the suspect reportedly drew a knife from his waistband and stabbed the victim in the left chest. Law enforcement authorities were promptly alerted to the scene. Upon arrival, the suspect was identified by witnesses and subsequently apprehended. He remains in police custody as investigations continue. The victim's body was transported to the Port Kaituma Hospital mortuary, awaiting a post-mortem examination to ascertain the cause of death. As the investigation unfolds, the community of Arakaka is left reeling from the tragic loss, while authorities work diligently to uncover the circumstances surrounding the incident and ensure justice is served. Fatal Incident Strikes Peruni Backdam Miner Stephen Mark Samuel Killed in Pit Accident Authorities in Regional Division 7 are currently probing a tragic incident that unfolded on Sunday, April 14, 2024, around 4 p.m. M. at Peruni Back Dam, located along the Peruni River in Region 7. The incident resulted in the untimely death of Stephen Mark Samuel, a 47-year-old miner hailing from Karwat Mission, Pomeroon River, Region 2. According to initial investigations, Samuel was employed by a Brazilian national to work on a six-inch land dredge as a jetman. At the time of the incident, Samuel, along with several other workers, was engaged in excavation activities within a pit. Tragically, a section of the eastern wall of the pit suddenly collapsed, burying Samuel under the rubble. Upon realizing the gravity of the situation, fellow workers swiftly raised an alarm and immediately commenced efforts to extricate Samuel from the debris. Upon arrival at the scene, law enforcement officials conducted an examination of the area and Samuel's body. No signs of physical violence were detected. Subsequently, Samuel's motionless body was transported to the Peruni Health Center, where he was officially pronounced dead upon arrival by Dr. Semple. The body is currently housed at the Bartica Regional Hospital Mortuary and is slated for transportation to Georgetown for a post-mortem examination. As authorities continue their investigation into the circumstances surrounding this tragic incident, the mining community mourns the loss of Stephen Mark Samuel, highlighting the inherent risks associated with such hazardous work environments. Family Seeks Answers After GDF Soldier's Tragic Death The family of Corporal Leroy Tom, a member of the Guyana Defense Force GDF who tragically lost his life during training at Takama in Region 10, is left grappling with unanswered questions surrounding his sudden demise. Tom, a 30-year-old resident of Blueberry Hill in Linden, suddenly collapsed and passed away on Friday evening while undergoing training at the Colonel John Clark Military School at Takama. He was a member of the 2nd Infantry Battalion. News of Tom's passing was relayed to his family around 23:30 h that evening, sparking bewilderment and grief among his loved ones. However, family members assert that there are more questions than answers surrounding the circumstances of his death. According to initial reports, Tom had complained of feeling unwell during a routine training event and was promptly attended to by medical personnel. Despite efforts to resuscitate him, Tom tragically succumbed to his condition. A board of inquiry will be convened to investigate the circumstances surrounding his death, as announced by the GDF. However, Tom's wife, Kafia Ford, expressed dismay over the lack of communication from the military regarding her husband's condition. She highlighted discrepancies in the timeline leading up to Tom's passing, asserting that he had not exhibited any signs of illness prior to the incident. Ford recounted her last interactions with her husband, emphasizing that he had left for Takama on Friday morning, seemingly in good health. It wasn't until late Friday night that she received word of his deteriorating condition. 
Recounting details provided by a colleague, Ford revealed that Tom had suddenly collapsed during training, expressing distress over his foot before losing consciousness. His unexpected death has left a profound void in the lives of his family, including their four-year-old son. As the family awaits the results of Tom's post-mortem examination, they continue to seek clarity and closure surrounding the circumstances leading to his untimely demise. Mother and son charged with murder following fatal altercation. Alicia Edmondson, aged 42, and her son, Malachi Kennedy, a 22-year-old linesman, both residents of Lot 3, Perry Street, Tuckville, Georgetown, found themselves facing serious charges today in connection with the death of 36-year-old Amoziah Hohenkirk, a laborer from Lot 1308, Unity Place, Festival City, Georgetown. Appearing before the Georgetown Magistrates Court on April 15, 2024, Edmondson and Kennedy were charged with murder and were not required to enter a plea. They have been remanded to prison until May 7, 2024. According to reports, tensions escalated on April 11, 2024, at approximately 11.15 p.m. M., when an altercation arose between Alicia Edmondson, her 24-year-old son, and the deceased over a damaged speaker box. The following morning, April 12, 2024, Alicia informed her other son, Mokshi Kennedy, aged 21, of alleged abuse by an individual named Daryl. In response, Mokshi went in search of Daryl and encountered the deceased, Amoziah Hohenkirk, along with an individual named Sean on Perry Street at around 7 a.m. M. An argument ensued, leading all parties involved to Alicia's residence. During the confrontation at the residence, Sean, allegedly armed with a hockey stick, reportedly struck Alicia on her left wrist. In response, Alicia allegedly retrieved a knife and inflicted multiple stab wounds on the deceased, including one to the abdomen and one each on the left and right wrists. Following the altercation, the deceased and Sean fled the scene and sought medical attention at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation GPHC. However, despite receiving treatment, Amoziah Hohenkirk succumbed to his injuries. The tragic incident has left the community shocked and authorities grappling with the complexities of the case as they continue their investigation into the circumstances surrounding the fatal altercation. Two men charged and remanded with the murder of a Burbis woman. In a solemn courtroom scene at the Springlands Magistrates Court today, Yogendra Pokai, aged 18, and Tishan David, aged 25, faced charges of rape and murder in connection with the death of a 52-year-old woman. The victim, identified as Nainawadi Nandalal, was found lifeless in the backlands of No. 54 Village, Quarantine, Burbis, sparking a wave of shock and grief throughout the community. Appearing before Magistrate Twana Hardy, the accused, represented by senior counsel Merceline Bacchus, were not required to enter a plea to the indictable charge. Instead, they were remanded to prison until May 8, with the case being transferred to the No. 51 Village Magistrates Court. Reports indicate that while in police custody, both Pokai and David confessed to the heinous acts of rape and murder perpetrated against Nandalal. The post-mortem examination conducted on her body revealed the cause of death to be asphyxiation, an incise wound to the neck, and a fracture of the cervical spine. The tragic incident unfolded after Nandalal ventured into the back dam on Thursday to pick mangoes but failed to return home. Her son, along with other relatives, launched a frantic search effort throughout the night and into the early hours of the morning. Their anguish turned to horror when, during a subsequent search on Friday morning, Nandalal's son stumbled upon her lifeless body, concealed amidst the foliage. Describing the harrowing scene, Nandalal's son recounted, it was blood all over her face. Her neck had a cut, and from there downwards, she was naked. Initially, three individuals were apprehended in connection with the murder, but it was Pokai and David who ultimately confessed to their involvement in the brutal assault and subsequent death of Nandalal, leading to the charges laid against them today. As the legal proceedings progress, the community remains gripped by a sense of shock and sorrow, grappling with the tragic loss of Nainawadi Nandalal and the unsettling circumstances surrounding her untimely demise.